Welcome back everybody, the History Guy here. It's time to press ahead with this Confederate campaign in legendary mode of Ultimate General Civil War. This is the Battle of Mansfield. This was a battle historically that was fought in Louisiana and it was part of a Union attempt uh, called the Red River Campaign. It was a Union attempt to uh, capture the uh, acting Confederate capital, capital of Shreveport, Louisiana. Uh, and it was a Confederate victory. They were able to stop the Union from being able to take that position. Uh, about a thousand, maybe a little more, casualties on both sides in this battle when it was fought historically. So this is what we're looking at. Um, he's going to outnumber me by about 2,800 men, uh, almost 3 to 1 on guns. But being as though I'm going to be spending the majority of my time in the woods, uh, I'm not too worried about his guns. I'm bringing three batteries of 10-pounder parrots to try and uh, counter his battery fire. But otherwise, things are going to be pretty even. This is a, it's kind of an ugly battle uh, because he's going to be in a strong position in the woods. And basically, as I've gone back and kind of studied my past couple of playthroughs on this battle... Uh, what I've basically come to the conclusion is that I just need to push through, deal with the casualties early, get him pushed out of the woods, and get myself into a position right along in these woods where I can hold the objective and hit him out in the open, especially when his reinforcements come. So uh, with that in mind, I'm going to forego the guns to start in favor of additional infantry, and then I can bring up those guns and get him into position in the second phase of this battle when he gets his reinforcement. So I'll have 16 brigades to start. I should have a pretty decent size advantage to start this battle and then it's just a matter of getting myself into the strongest position possible to uh, go against his counterattacks. So I'm going to go ahead and get myself in a position, get moving, and then we'll see how this all goes. All right, we're going to get the ball rolling on this one. Uh, don't outnumber him by much. It's definitely not the favorable position early in the battle that I found myself in. Last time I played through this campaign, of course, that was on Brigadier General Gif difficulty. Numbers are much more even this time, so it's going to be a lot more challenging, I think. But uh, one of the interesting things about this battle, of course, is uh, it was led on the Confederate side by, at the time, Major General Richard Taylor. He was eventually a lieutenant general, and he was the only son of the 12th president of the United States, Zachary Taylor. And Richard Taylor was involved in politics before the war. He, uh, he was actually opposed to the idea of secession, but once secession happened, he did side with uh, his native state and the South. Uh, he actually lived in Louisiana, led Louisiana troops, even though he was born in Kentucky like his father before him, who was from Kentucky. Uh, I think his father was born in Virginia, but uh, was from Kentucky. He's buried in, in Louisville, Kentucky. And uh, so, oh boy, I hate when that happens. Um, Richard Taylor was one of very few um, high-ranking officers on either side who uh, did not attend West Point. He was, one, I think, one of only three Confederate lieutenant generals who didn't attend West Point. He started out fighting in the East. He was at uh, some of the early battles in the Eastern Theater. He served under Stonewall Jackson and Richard Yule in the uh, in the Valley Campaign. Performed very well for himself there. Uh, the brigade he commanded included the uh, Louisiana Tiger Battalion, and he was kind of used as the kind of quick strike force, uh, doing flanking maneuvers and things like that. And a lot of Jackson's strategies re relied heavily on Taylor's command and his ability to lead his troops, and he did quite well in that capacity. Um, so as the son of Zachary Taylor, Richard Taylor was, at least for a brief time, also the brother-in-law of uh, future Confederate President Jefferson Davis, whose first wife was Zachary Taylor's daughter. Uh, they were only married for a few months before she died. And then President Taylor's brother was a Union general, which means that uh, a lieutenant general, Richard Taylor, on the Confederate side had a, um, I think, a brigadier general, or maybe a major, major general, uh, on, I think his name was Joseph Taylor, on the Union side, who happened to be his uncle and, and a brother to the former president. We're going to make our first contact here. It's with a two-star brigade, the 96th Ohio. 
and already Hatch just got lit up. He just lost 150 men in those first couple of volleys. He's probably going to break pretty quickly, I would guess. These guys are going to get into the woods, it looks like, without opposition. Yeah, I had a feeling that Hatch wouldn't survive that. See, he's got these huge brigades. So I'm just hoping I can overwhelm him with numbers on the front here, but man, it's a lot of firepower to deal with. But once I break through and I run him out of these woods, I'll be okay, because then I can line up in a good defensive position. I'll have the upper hand. I've just got to suffer the casualties to get there. Of course, all of this is leading into a, a series of just really brutal battles that are coming. The Wilderness, Spotsylvania. I'm just trying to overrun him the best I can. I know he's got to have more men down here somewhere, maybe some cavalry, but I haven't seen him yet. goodness so let's see because I think even in the first 15 minutes of this thing I've probably already lost a ton of men yeah um, he's lost a thousand I've already lost uh, about two and a half thousand men just in those first few minutes but the good news is I'm seeing his units route if I can get a couple shots in on some of these batteries I'll start to drive him out, and we'll have the upper hand. And that's the main thing here, is just to get him out of these woods. I think he gets his probably gets his reinforcements around the two-hour mark, so I've got to have him pushed out and be at the edge of these woods and hold the objective by that point. All right, Ashmore, you get him back up. Uh, once you get to 1864, it's just there's there's not a lot of fun to be had in this in this campaign on the Confederate side. It's just one brutal battle after the other. I'm trying to get around his flank. I've really got to get into these batteries. So he's, he's lost a little over 2,000 men. I've lost 4,000 already. Let's see if I can get my fire into the 23rd Wisconsin so I can drive them off. All right, here comes the rest of my troops. get my artillery. I'll start bringing these guys up and then I'll direct the artillery where I need them, but the main thing is I'm starting to get some push finally. And the advantage will start shifting in my direction once that happens.
my goodness, the, the losses that some of these units have already had. Alright, so he's lost 3,000 men now. I've lost over five. Every one of these battles from here on out is just a, a slaughterhouse. running out of time before he gets his reinforcements. And that's going to be a problem. Poor troops are exhausted already. Thankfully, I'll finally get up here into the, the flank of the 19th Kentucky. I'm going to try to relieve some of these exhausted troops lost a major general killed. Alright, come on guys. Let's get these guys pushed out of these woods quickly. I just can't believe it. I'm trying to get on these guys' flanks here, but because I'm in the woods, that really just kind of negates any advantage you get from that. Just now, finally starting to make some breakthroughs. There we go. And there's the cavalry. I knew there had to be some somewhere. I just wasn't sure where they were. I gotta hurry up and press through. He hasn't gotten his reinforcements yet, but they're coming. Here they come. Finally drove off the infantry so I can finally get some shots in on his artillery. Alright, I gotta move up my artillery so I can start doing some counter battery fire. I think these are 24 pounders here, that's why they're having the issue with the short range. Yeah. I should have brought all uh, 10 pounder parrots. Would have been better for dealing with his artillery. Okay. Let's finish pushing through over here. No, 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 no. Why are those 10-pounder parrots going in there? So 
he outnumbers me by about 4,000, almost 4,000 men now, a little less. Let's go ahead and pause for just a second. I want to kind of evaluate the situation a little bit. So he outnumbers me by about 3,500 men. I've taken out almost 50 of his guns, so that's huge. Uh, I'm trying to level the playing field as far as the artillery goes. And then um, maybe we can start to see a little bit better um, numbers in terms of the casualties. It looks like I've lost about 8,200 men at this point to his about 5,500. I really want to make that even by the time this is over. So what I want to do here is, if I can use these skirmishers to screen his cavalry, I can hopefully get up here on the flank a little bit. Got a ammo issue for the first time. So let's send the supplies up. All that time I finally got him where I want him as far as the the line of battle goes. I need to keep going after this artillery. He's only got 10 more guns than me now. Now it's just a matter of holding tight and trying to inflict some casualties on him. I'm trying to get Adams, what's left of Adams, up around the flank. He's lost 815 men with only 87 kills. That's just brutal. But his advantage is down to just 3,308 guns. Bidwell down here.
Casualties looks like they're fairly even, unfortunately. I was hoping it would be a little better than that. See if I have better luck firing on his infantry with my 20 pounders. 24 pounders. Uh, okay, so about 19 minutes to go. This one just basically looks like it's going to be a slugfest back and forth. He's still got 3,000 more men than me. The artillery numbers are about even, but casualties are going to be in his favor, unfortunately. And that isn't something I can really afford going into these next few battles. So we're gonna we're gonna get through this one, and what I want to do, uh, just for a few minutes, is talk about, just kind of look at where I am and, and where my units are at this point. Yeah, I'm gonna let this one play out a little bit, just because I finally am gaining an advantage with the numbers. So I think the longer this one plays out, the, the more in my favor it will go. See, now he's down to just 1,400 more men than me. Main problem right now is my guns are all running low on ammo. So i got to go get them resupplied. So let's, see, let's keep this going a little while. Try to even these casualties out. Pretty close to even now, I think. He's pulled all his artillery back, apparently. It's almost 8 o'clock, so I don't imagine it's going to let this one go on forever. That's about all the casualties that I'm comfortable with losing at this point. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at the final total. So they came out pretty even, but that's not something I can afford as a confederacy at this point. I can't afford to uh, go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. That was something Grant understood all too well. Was that At this point in the war, the confederates just did not have the men to replace the ones they were losing. So let's take a look. at where things stand at this point. Um, I went back, If you you might have noticed that at the end of the last battle, uh, I only had eight in army organization, and now I have nine. And the reason for that is I went back and replayed the very end of um, Chickamauga so I could get that extra army organization point instead so that I could take 24 brigades into Mansfield instead of just 20. So that's why the change there. But now I'm going to go logistics because I need to start kind of beefing up my ability to keep firing uh, at the expense of the Union who maybe runs out of ammunition first. So um, I'm, I'm going to back things up here for a second and then we're going to take a look at where everything stands moving forward. So I'm taking a look at where things stand in the campaign moving forward and I've come to a conclusion. I'm thinking about whether or not fighting Mansfield is even worth it. And here's why. There's no advantage. Um, well, there's one right here, Cold Harbor. Uh, no, that's Gettysburg. So sometimes in the minor battles ahead of time, they give you some perks in the upcoming uh, grand battle. 
Uh, for example, right here, it might say, okay, his enemy army is 5% lower in size because you won Mansfield. But none of that seems to be the case here. I don't see any advantage to winning the Battle of Mansfield because uh, I, I didn't receive enough um, in terms of manpower and money to replace the losses that I suffered. Um, so I don't know. Uh, I'm thinking about maybe it was better to have not fought that battle at all. Uh, so I'd love to hear your thoughts on that um, moving forward. Do you think maybe I should just go back to where I saved the game before Mansfield and just skip that battle altogether and go right to Saunders Farm? Because uh, as I'm looking at this, and maybe there's something I'm missing, I'm not seeing an advantage to fighting that battle. Um, I, I was only looking at like eight points in terms of government points, and the manpower basically was a wash, so I, I lost more men than I gained. And obviously the money, same situation. Um, so I'm feeling like that's the case. But maybe I'm, I'm overlooking something and I could be wrong about that. His training number, I think, actually went up as well. And his armor has already been high. Uh, so I'm thinking maybe it's just better off to uh, skip right to Saunders Farm. But uh, in the meantime, what I want to do real quickly is just look at the performance of some of the brigades uh, up to this point in the war. Because one of the cool things about this game is that you can go and look and see what a, a brigade has done in every previous campaign uh, that he's been involved in. So you can see, for example, the Orphan Brigade going all the way back to Ambush Convoy, where they had 179 lost and uh, 603 killed. And you can see what kind of weapons they had at each of these battles. Uh, these guys had Springfield 1842s for a while. They're currently using Spring Springfield 1855s. Uh, so Chickamauga was a great, great day for the Orphan Brigade, which was a battle that the historic Orphan Brigade actually fought in. Uh, they had 512 losses, but 1,950 kills. Salem Church was a really good day for them as well. Chantilly, they were heavily involved. So let's look at Hampton's Legion. Uh, holy cow, <laughs> they've had 27,568 kills. That may be the best that I've got. I mean, look at the battles with the multiple numbers of men killed in each of these battles. Um, Chickamauga, they caused almost 3,000 casualties. Fredericksburg, they caused over 3,000. 3, uh, O'Hare's Ohio Outlaws, same thing, 23,000 total kills. A big one, of course, for them was also Fredericksburg. Snakefoot Brigade, uh, 16,000 kills. Uh, they've been having some really good performances as of late. Paper Collar Brigade right here. Again, uh, 15,000 kills, 8,000 losses. Ashmore, 17,000. I'm just looking to see if there's anybody else that really stands out. Uh, Adams, they've been fairly even. Pickett is a, a relatively new brigade. They haven't been that involved. Neither is this one. A lot of these are some of my newer brigades. This one actually has more losses than kills. That's a, a first, I think, among the units I've looked at so far. Yeah, so it looks like right now, Hampton Legion is probably the elite unit of my army. As far as their performance on the field in all these various battles. Yeah, it definitely appears to be the case. Now, I'm curious to look at some of these artillery units. Uh, 310 losses, 14,000 kills. Look at Chickamauga, they had 1,700 kills there. They had 1,000 at Fredericksburg. These 10-pounders here, same deal, 23 losses, 3,500 kills, 1,200 kills at Chickamauga. These are the 24-pounders. They had almost 1,200 kills as well. So some of these other units, that may be the case, but I think for the most part, we've we've looked at the elite among my units. So I'm going to wrap up right there. Obviously... Um, I pose that question to you. What do you think I should do uh, about uh, skipping Mansfield? I think maybe that's the way to go. Maybe some of you have played and discovered the same thing and you want to lend your insight to that. I certainly welcome it. Uh, do you think there was a better strategy if I were to go back and refight Mansfield? Is there a better way I could have done that rather than just kind of attacking along the entire front and trying to push him out of the woods? Uh, I've tried going north and coming down through the woods, but... Uh, inevitably, anything you try to do with too much maneuvering, I think, 
uh, doesn't give you enough time by the time he gets his reinforcements. So that's kind of my thought process with all that, but I'd love to hear from some of you. In the meantime, I want to say thank you so much to all of the fantastic uh, input and response that I had to my last channel update. Uh, I will definitely be taking some of that advice a a into consideration and Hopefully you'll see some of that coming. Please keep that coming. As always, I welcome any and all input that you have or suggestions or requests. I am continuing to tweak some of the stuff on Patreon. Uh, I am, uh, on the suggestion of a couple of you, going to drop the level at which you can get a, na a brigade named because there's a lot of them out there. Um, so check that out. Uh, by the time this video goes live, I will have finished those changes. I'm always welcome, uh, open and welcome to new ideas as far as uh, perks that I could do at the, at the Patre uh, Patreon page. I do have a Discord. Uh, if you want to look for that, it's the History Guy. I'm going to put a link in there. Originally, when I made the Discord, I made it part of one of the perks for Patreon. I'm uh, getting rid of that. I just want that to be something that's available to everybody. And if you have suggestions about things I can do with Discord, please let me know. I'm fairly new to that, uh, but please check that out. I'll put that link in the description for anyone who wants to be a part of it. As always, thanks for watching, guys, and we will see you again very soon.